I'm Dr. James Wilcox, and today we'll be discussing basic knee ultrasound. First, we'll look at the anterior knee, you know, joint effusions, patellar tendon, the medial knee, the MCL tear and arthroses, and the lateral knee looking at the LCL, joint arthroses, and the posterior knee for the popliteal cyst, and any kind of hamstring damage. With musculoskeletal ultrasound, make sure your marker dot's always pointed towards the patient's head or their right, or following along whatever tendon or structure you're looking at. First, we'll look at the superior anterior knee. You can see the quadriceps tendon, the femur, and the patella, and the two fat pads that a suprapatellar effusion might come through. If you're having trouble identifying a suprapatellar effusion, one thing you can do is squeeze the knee, and that'll push some of the fluid up into the suprapatellar pouch, or you can have your patient extend their knee, and that will also bring some of the fluid into the knee joint. Next, we'll evaluate the quadriceps tendon in short axis. And you can cause anisotropy, so make sure to have your tail appropriately positioned. You can also look at the femur below the quadriceps tendon for any signs of cortical disruption or irregularity. You can look at the femur and the quadriceps tendon in short axis and in long axis. Next, we'll follow the patella along for any signs of patellar bursitis or um, patellar fractures. Make sure to look with a lot of gel to make sure you don't squeeze any um, fluid out inappropriately. Then we'll look at the patellar tendon here, inferior to the patella, as it goes down and inserts onto the tibia. And we'll want to make sure and look at that patellar tendon, both in short axis and long axis, for any signs of ruptures or tears. You can also sometimes see bursitis in some of the bursa nearby. Next, we'll look at the medial joint line. I usually like to start at the medial femoral condyle and then follow that distal towards the foot until you see the joint line. You can see the triangle-shaped meniscus there. And often patients will have small irregularities of the cortex of the bone on the medial femur, especially if they're runners. You can follow down to the pes anserine and the medial collateral ligament. You can follow that along approximately as well. Next, we'll look at the lateral joint line, again, starting at the femoral condyle and following it down. This little ski slope that the popliteus hangs out in. And then there's the meniscus. If you want to find the lateral collateral ligament, it's a little bit challenging. We like to um, drop the probe down to the fibula and then rotate ever so slightly to get that lateral collateral ligament in view. It's a little bit of a complex on the fibula because um, the IT band can also um, come along the lateral edge of the knee and also the hamstring tendon. Next, we'll want to look at our patient's knee in short axis and look at the joint line along the femur and look at in transverse view. And we can see the nice femoral cartilage in this patient. You can look for signs of cartilage thinning or a gouge in the cartilage or signs of gout or pseudo gout. Next, we'll have our patient turn over. We can look at the vessels in the posterior knee. We can look at the popliteal artery and vein. The vein should be easily compressible. Next, we'll look for a Baker cyst. This will be between the medial gastrocnemius tendon and the medial hamstring or the semimembranosus. You look right where the tendons are for the stalk. This patient happens to have a very small one. And you can look at that Baker cyst in long axis and in short axis to take measurements. Next, we can look at the hamstring tendons. We'll look at the head of the fibula where the lateral hamstring biceps femoris will attach. You can look at it in short axis and in long axis for any signs of tearing or disruption or tendinopathy. Thank you for watching.